There's only been one time in my life that I've been in the same room as Donald Trump. And that's probably likely to remain so, but I have no other option but to tell you that story here today. I mean, I do have an option, but why would I talk about anything else? But you're right, the Twitter thing, the tweeting thing does get you in trouble. Yeah. You know, you say things and you think it's so cute and so smart right. and it comes back to haunt you. Me and my friend Chris were in New York City. We had flown all the way across country because we decided we really needed to see Louis C.K. live. And why would we go to some place closer to us like Seattle? Because New York City is better than Seattle. Well, look at me, I have a space needle. Good job, great, great, fantastic city. Anyway, so we're in New York City and one of the things that I absolutely wanted to get off my bucket list was to see David Letterman live. He was like one of my heroes growing up I'd been to New York Times many times before and never been able to get tickets to his show. We have to recognize that this country is not for uh, wealthy, fat, white guys. Letterman had not announced his retirement at this point, but I knew that he had to be getting close to it. So I tried this one last time, even though I'd been to New York multiple times in the past, had been unable to get a ticket. I was like, nope, this time I feel it. I know I'm going to get it. And I did. Depending on your age, I get it. I understand if you have no perception of why David Letterman is such an important voice in American comedy. But to me, this was this was really like seeing the Beatles live. This was this was uh, I don't know, akin to going to a Boney Bear concert, I guess, for all those kids out there. So we get shuffled into the theater and we discover who our guests are gonna be, which were Donald Trump, Adam Levine, and Carly Rae Jepsen. I mean, Call Me Maybe was fairly big at the time. And at this point Donald Trump was simply the star of All-Star Apprentice, and he was there kind of, you know, promoting that show, but he was also there to promote a line of menwear. Because, I, I mean, I've been on this end, like, how could I dress like Donald Trump? I mean, I don't know how hard it is to grab a JCPenney suit and a red tie, but there we are. And so the story is simultaneously the one and only time I've seen Donald Trump, but it's also to glorify David Letterman, because there's a moment that happens in the interview. I have nothing against China. I just hate that their leaders are so much smarter than our leaders. 2016, we will not be the world leader anymore. We have been always. There's this point in the interview where Donald Trump is really building up his tie collection that he's showing off. And he's also simultaneously talking about how worse off America is. And what Letterman did was allow Donald Trump to go off at the mouth and then just very casually reached over to one of the ties and said, Ties? Where are the ties they made? Have to work These are too. beautiful ties. They are great ties. The ties are made in where? China? China. Ties are made in China. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. The what. audience erupts in laughter because really what else can you do? We just spent the last couple minutes of someone going on and on and on about trying to make America great again, only to be shown that He's not doing what he talks about. He's been hoisted by his own petard. Fun fact, I used to think that saying was hoisted by your own Picard, which granted is a better saying, but makes way less sense. This must have been humiliating. This must have been so embarrassing to be a part of. And yet to his credit, Donald Trump just kind of soldiers on, just like he's shown in this presidential election of just being like laser focused, it doesn't matter if he's been proven wrong, he's just gonna keep on going. I didn't notice anything especially presidential about Donald Trump that day, but what I did notice is how great of an interviewer David Letterman actually was, and some credit that is not often given to him, at least I don't think. Because he was able to take a guy and not explicitly mock him, but also show how ridiculous he was by saying so few words. By all accounts, if you listen to the lamestream media, Donald Trump is probably not going to be the leader of the free world, but who knows what's going to happen on election day. There still could be another October surprise, so if he does become president, I can feel very special knowing that I got to see him before he even started running for president. But even more than that, I'm just very thankful I got to see David Letterman before he went off the air. And even more excited that I got to see Adam Levine with his shirt on. I understand what you're saying. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyle. I upload a video every Monday and Thursday. I also sort of co-host a podcast every week called Whatever This Is. A link to that and all of my social media is down in the description below. Any famous people you've met, let me know down in the comments a place where we can always gush about our favorite celebrities and uh, I'll pretend to care.